Life. I'm Tim, and today we're going to collect a swarm here at this industrial facility. It's a little bitty swarm on the end of this cylinder, and it was larger yesterday. Uh, I was told about it at the end of the day, and it actually rained last night, and these bees have managed to stay here under here under the rain. It's supposed to rain today, so I need to get these bees out of here. See the bees here at the end of this cylinder. Zoom in and see if we can better, better, better view of them. Oh yeah, look at those guys balled up. It rained last night. This should be a pretty easy capture here. So the goal here is to get the ball mass into the uh, the nuke. I gotta make sure I get the queen in there, because if the queen doesn't go in there, they're gonna follow her. But if the queen goes in there, then of course they'll stay. If I find the queen, I'm gonna capture her here. That way for the next several days, while they're holed up in here at the new place, they'll stay with the queen. If not, she'll fly away with them. this I'm gonna take it home I'm gonna keep it closed up for a while uh, just to make sure that they you know the, the, the lo new location they're at is gonna be you know where they want to stay I'll make sure that I give them a, a frame of uh, comb and maybe comb honey give them something to start with and because uh, right now the five frames I have in there are just uh, undrawn uh, plastic uh, foundation comb or frames and uh, so I'll give them some honey and some drawn comb just to make sure they have something to start with I didn't have one uh, today when I brought this out we really appreciate uh, this corporation for letting us come out here and protect these bees. It's a really good thing for the uh, for the environment, and uh, we need to make sure all companies, whenever they uh, do see a swarm of bees, they call someone that's qualified to come take them. Um, that way, we uh, ensure the uh, the growth and continuance of these uh, honeybee populations. I really want to thank Nucor Steel for uh, giving me the call to come pick these bees up. Nucor is the nation's largest recycler and uh, they're also the nation's largest steel producer. Uh, so it's a very, very good uh, employee-based company. They do a lot of good things for their employees. They do a lot of good things for the environment as well. We're gonna look around and see if we see any more. This was a really small ball. Maybe there's another uh, split swarm someplace else. So we'll see if we can catch another one today. 
see a draw going in there. We got really lucky today and these were still here. Uh, they were spotted yesterday evening and it was a little too late for me to come out. And uh, so they were, they were at a ball under here under this uh, cylinder on this rack. And it rained last night. I mean, there's, there it is soaking wet out here. So that ball, that little ball of bees huddled up there under the end of that cylinder and maintained through the night. I didn't see a bunch of dead bees on the ground either. So, you know, they, they, they thrived. They were, they were really lethargic. I didn't even smoke them today uh, when I got them off. But it was, it's right at six o'clock in the morning. The sun was just coming up. I got them before all the, the scout bees started going out again, looking for another swarm location. So uh, I think we did a pretty good job. There's a few stragglers coming in, and I'm gonna let a few more come in, and I'll close them up, and we'll uh, get them out of here. It's pretty cool. The, uh, the bees overnight were sitting under this cylinder in here, and you can see I've got my nuke entrance right here, and I'm just trying to kick, uh, catch any stragglers that were left out, and the smell of the queen right there under that cylinder is drawing a lot of them back. Uh, and they were congregating there, and I'm pulling them off, trying to get them to go back down into the nuke. I'm just trying to catch these straggler scouts here. If I start seeing any come out of the nuke itself, then I'm going to button it up because then we'll be uh, uh, losing more than we gain. But you see a few of them trying to congregate right there. That's where that queen was, and uh, they still smell a real strong there. So just got to make sure we don't lose any that we still get. We're gaining more than we lose. We've got our pro nuke set up for transport where uh, our entrance is in the transport position closed so they can't get in and out and of course it's vented and the top top is set, set to the vented position you can see right there where it says vented and uh, these pro nukes work out really good for swarm capture and transport I really like those and you can see I got my uh, my swarm box uh, this beekeeping box I keep my my, my stewed in, my queen catcher, my smoker. You can keep back to the swarm box, the nuke box will fit inside of it. Pretty awesome. Welcome back. You can see we made it back to our apiary here on the ridge with the uh, pro nuke with all of our bees doing just fine. I can hear them going. Yeah, they're buzzing like crazy. Now they were, they've been in here all day from six o'clock this morning and it's 5 p.m. now. So, but they're doing just fine. We've got them set up here on a uh, pallet with a B-Smart A-frame stand it sits in this pro nuke sits in here just just fine we're going to keep them closed up until uh tomorrow that way they can get accustomed to this location and the pro nuke you can see our uh, number one and number two hives are behind us they're doing just fine uh, number one is the farthest one away number two is the one in the middle um, number one is the one I had issues with that were pro was probably going to swarm, but last time I checked, I had a queen in there, I was queen right, and uh, there were still tons and tons of bees. Number two has got lots of brood, and it's making honey in the super just like number one. Not quite as much, but it's doing well. So now we've got a swarm catch here, and uh, we're hoping we can get this one to survive. It was probably only about a thousand bees, a really small ball, uh, but we've got five frames in here. They were. Uh, undrawn comb they were just plastic foundations pre-waxed i might once i get these bees to stay here i may grab some honey and some uh brood from one of the uh, colonies behind me put in here give them something really to have a good start i am going to feed these bees here today and i'm going to show you how i'm going to do that with the pro nuke again you can see how well this pro nuke sits in this b smart eight frame stand um now if this was a uh, uh, a situation where I was going to have this nuke here for a long time, I could run strap under the pallet and over the, uh, the pro nuke to keep it here. Again, I won't be having them in here too long, so I'm just going to leave right here. And it, it actually is, is very sturdy. So, to feed the bees while they're sitting here, these have uh, the pro nuke has openings here. Small bottle, like for a soda bottle. And this one's like for a, a gallon bottle. And it has slits in it. I'll show you that here in just a second. What you got to do is you got to cut those slits out and then put your water bottle on it with the sugar water. So that's the location we're going to put our water bottle on with our one-to-one -one sugar water. And you see the, the, the grooves inside the hole? You need to cut those out. What I do is I stick the knife in there. Let me zoom in so you can see what we're doing here. Let you zoom right in there so you can see what's going on. So what I do is just in each one of these grooves, I sli slide it, I sli slit it with the knife to get that opening real good so the bees can get the water as it drips out of the bottle. The feeder bottle, I've slit holes in the top of it as well. And again, it's just a water bottle with a standard cap. And 
people have complained about the water bottles not fitting in very tight into the uh, Pro Nuke top. So if you just take a little bit of electrical tape or masking tape and put it around the top, it could give it a better seal when it goes into the holding holder. Okay? So you can see when I turn this over, you get a little drip, just a little drip, and that's going to continue to drip out and the bees are going to be able to feed. So let's put it in the hole there. Okay? Now see how that popped in like that? And I can monitor where the level is in the water in the bottle and make sure that it's actually getting some to feed. So I have the slits in the plastic lid and I have the slits in the plastic lid in the bottle and they should be able to feed. It just drips through very, very slowly and they'll get up there and they'll drink that sugar water coming through. Now the bottom of the Pro Nuke has holes in it too. So if it rains or if something happens to get, you know, this, this was to flood it, it would drain out the bottom of the Pro Nuke. So we have to worry about flooding our bees with lots and lots of moisture buildup. I believe this setup works very, very well. And you can see how the Pro Nuke, I've got the, the entrance taped closed. How these Pro Nukes work is this uh, entrance will come up and bow out to leave a good opening for the bees to come and go. But then when you want them in transport mode, you slide that down and it locks into place. I've got it taped there for transport. I didn't want them getting out in my car on the way home. It's 53 mile drive from work to home. So, and I had the lid taped down as well. So it just, it just aids if anything was to come up trying to pull on a little bit. It, they click in place, but the tape also helps, I believe. So again, I'm going to leave these bees in here overnight, and then probably tomorrow evening, I'm going to inspect them to see how they're doing. Um, based on what I see, I may open up the entrance here and leave them in here a little bit longer, or I may transfer them into another eight frame uh, hive box like I have, and one of the tricks I've told, I've been told, is when I transfer them over, you gotta be careful because your the queen may want to continue to move around, swarm around, and not stay here. Uh, they have not accepted this as their new home. So what you can do with a regular hive box is on top of your bottom board, put a queen excluder. So you have your deep, your inner cover, and your lid. And on the bottom, you have a queen excluder, and then your bottom board. So at that point, the worker bees and scouts and, and, and foragers, they'll be coming and going, but the queen can't leave. So they can't swarm with her. She'll have to stay there. And that's another good way just to make sure that the, uh, the new uh, swarm develops into a, a, a full working colony. I think these girls have gotten from me everything they need right now, so I'm gonna let them be. And uh, we'll come back and check on them in the morning and see how they're doing. And then if all goes well, maybe tomorrow night, we'll come back and uh, give them some more room.